Hi, this is Start 3D Modeling Channel, and in this video I will show you how to create a part like this in Plasticity. Here, I'm not entirely focused on showing you how to create exactly this part. Rather, I want to demonstrate one thing related to Radial Array. For many people, when we talk about a Radial Array, it is associated with something we create based on a cylindrical element. However, a Radial Array is a tool that we can also use on other shapes. In this case, we can use it on a rectangular box, and by the way, as you can see, I can smoothly rotate, zoom in, and zoom out this model. I can smoothly navigate this model in the workspace. I use a space mouse from 3D Connection for navigation. If you want to learn more about 3D Connection devices, you will find a link in the description of this video. There's also a discount code that will reduce the price of 3D Connection devices. However, I will clarify right away that when it comes to 3D Connection devices and plasticity, we don't have full integration here. We have a basic integration that allows for smooth navigation. 3D connection devices also come in various versions. There are devices that are more advanced and have several buttons that support and facilitate work with CAD CAM systems. However, in the case of plasticity, we don't have full integration yet. We do have navigation integration and it works nicely. And such a setup significantly facilitates and speeds up work with 3D modeling software. But okay, let's move on to plasticity and I'll show you how to create such a part. Along the way, I'll show you a few interesting features regarding the radial array in plasticity. I will turn off the visibility of this solid and start by creating a rectangular box. Let's choose the center box command. We hover over that icon, press and hold the left mouse button, and hover over that icon to activate the center box command. We place the center of the box at the origin of the coordinate system and enter the dimensions of the block as 100 by 100 millimeters. To do this, I press the tab key and enter 100. Then tab again and enter 100 and then I press enter to confirm. Next I press the H key to set the height of the box and also enter 100 and then I press enter and enter again. We have created the box. Now I switch to the face selection, press the 3 key on the keyboard, select this face and press the spacebar to create geometry on this face. Here we will choose the command to draw a rectangle from the center. Just like when creating the box, we hover the cursor over this point, press and hold the left mouse button and select the center rectangle command. We draw a rectangle whose center will be at this point. The snap has been activated here. We click with the left mouse button and regarding the dimensions of this rectangle, it goes like this. We press the tab key, enter 50 millimeters, then press the tab key again, enter 150 and press enter to confirm. Now we close the temporary construction plane Select this rectangle and add an extrusion of 10 millimeters. I press the D key, enter, minus 10, so that this extrusion will be made in this direction into the solid. I would like to remove material from this box based on this extrusion, so I press the W key on the keyboard and select this solid as the solid from which I will remove material and I click OK to confirm. I turn off the visibility of the flat geometry and now with the shift key pressed I select this edge. However here I need to switch to the edge selection, press the 2 key and select this edge. Then I press the shift key and select this edge and I have two edges selected here. We will add a fillet with a radius of 20 millimeters. To do this precisely, I press the D key and enter 20, press enter and enter again to finish this command. Now we will add a chamfer on this edge. To select these edges, we can do it by holding the shift key and simply clicking on each of those edges. However, an easier way to do this is to hold the Alt key. And here the entire chain will be highlighted. We click with the left mouse button and the entire chain is selected. I would like to add a chamfer of 10 millimeters. 
so I press the C key. Type in 10 and hit enter to confirm and hit enter again to finish this command. Ok, we have something like that and now, based on what we've done, we will add additional copies of this feature on the other faces of this solid and we will do this using a radial array. As you can see, we have this solid and we can also add copies of the features on the box using a radial array. To do this, we switch to face selection, so I press the 3 key on the keyboard. With the shift key pressed, we select these faces, or we can do it by pressing the alt key, and now when I click on this face, all these faces are selected. Then I press the shift key and select this face as well. We have these faces selected, and we choose the radial array command. Now, What's important is that we need to specify the point around which the radial array will be executed. Here in this case, it's easy because the midpoint is the z-axis. However, if this solid were in another position, the first point that comes to mind would be the center of this block. I will do it this way. For now, I will cancel this operation. You don't have to do it. I will create a copy of this solid. I select this solid and now press Ctrl C, Ctrl V and I'll create a copy of this solid somewhere in any position. So now we have two solids. I switch to face selection, press the Alt key, select these faces, then press Shift and select this face. Now I choose the radial array command. As the point around which the circular array will be executed, I select the z-axis. Note that we have another point that lies close to the z-axis, and that is the midpoint of this face. However, soon you will see the difference between the midpoint of this face and the z-axis. I select the z-axis here, set the number of elements to 4 elements, and leave the angle at 360. In this way, we added additional occurrences of this feature. We simply added a copy of what we created on one face to the other faces. Now I'll go to the second solid. I select these faces, just like in the previous case. Here, first I click on this face to deselect this geometry so that no geometries from this solid are accidentally selected. I press the Alt key, click on one of those faces, and press Shift to select this face. Just like before, I select the radial array command. And here we need to specify the center point. As we hover near this face, we have the center point right here. By default, it is the first point that comes to mind to specify this point as the point around which we will perform the radial array. I select this point, and as before, I set the number of elements to 4. However, I cannot execute it this way. It might seem like something is wrong here, but now I'll cancel this operation and we'll create auxiliary geometry. I choose to draw a line. I will draw one line from this point to that point. I right click, choose to draw a line again, and draw a line from this point to that point. I right click, and the intersection point of these lines defines the center. Now I select these faces. I choose the radial array command and notice that the midpoint of the line is in a different place than the center of the face. What is displayed here as center is the snap that indicates the center point of the face, not the center point of the solid. Material has been removed from this face, and because the surface of this face is a little smaller, the location of the center point has also changed. And when it comes to using a radial array in such cases, we need to quite precisely specify the central point around which this array will be executed. If I select the intersection of these lines, as you can see something is also not quite right. By selecting this intersection, we haven't been able to execute the array. But I will click this button again and set a top view, because it is possible that the orientation of the midpoint also matters. Let's set a top view so that this point is displayed in this way and not as it was when the solid was oriented this way. Pay attention to how this snap is oriented. Here we have a snap orientation that is perpendicular to this face. And if I set a top view on this face, 
the snap orientation is like this. I will click at this location and OK. It also did not work out this way. OK, let's do it differently. I will select center point selection again. And now I will use this point as the central point. OK, here something did not work, so once again, for now, I will cancel it. I deselect all geometries. Press Alt, select these faces. Press Shift and select this face. I select the radial array command and will try once more to select this point, setting the number of elements to 4. OK, we weren't able to do that. All right, I will cancel that. We have these elements selected again for the radial array and I will try to select center x, y, number of elements 4 and now it worked. Simply by selecting the central point of this face, we managed to execute the circular array. I don't know why I couldn't perform this based on the point that resulted from the intersection of those two lines, but on the other hand, the fact that I couldn't is also a lesson, I accept that, and this way we have something like that. Now we can create elements with specific wall thicknesses, and we can do this easily. We simply select the face we want to remove, choose the hollow a solid command, and specify the wall thickness either outside or inside, for example to minus 1. So I press the D key, minus 1, hit enter, and we have something like that. I click OK, and here I also select this face, hollow solid, and here for example to minus 2, D, minus 2, hit enter, enter again, and we have something like that. I turn off the visibility of the flat geometries, and as you can see with these few simple steps, we created something like that. Here I wanted to show you that the radial array can be applied not only to cylindrical elements, but also that we can apply the circular array based on the faces of a solid. It does not have to be the whole solid. We can do this based on the faces of the solid, and these features will be transferred to other positions in the radial array. By the way, while creating this solid, a few issues arose, but this was also an interesting lesson, and I think this information might be useful for some people. We will end here. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to this channel.